talked about producing ray diagrams. These are diagrams that we draw on paper. But the light box is a device that actually gives us ray diagrams in reality. This is an experiment you're going to be doing in the lab, but I'd like to show you how it works before that. This, the light box simply consists of a source of light and a screen, and the screen has three or four slits cut in it. And so you can see the rays of light coming out from that. And obviously I can turn it. Now we can use this with various optical components. It's two-dimensional, not three-dimensional, but the idea is exactly the same. So for example, I can put a prism here, and if we set the prism up like so, you see the rays of light come in. They are deflected by the first surface and deflected again by the second surface. So for example, that ray of light is deviated to become that ray of light. Similarly, that ray of light is deviated there, deviated there, to become that ray of light. In the case of a prism, if we have parallel incoming rays, as we do here, we have parallel outgoing rays there. One of the things we can see with this is that as we rotate this, we will, in fact, get to a situation where we have total internal reflection. In fact, I have to rotate it this way. You'll notice here the rays of light are coming in. They are hitting this surface over here at above the critical angle. And so they're reflected from this surface and go out through that surface. So we actually have reflection going from reflected from that surface going out there, even though this isn't a mirror in the conventional sense. We're simply hitting that at above the critical angle. We can now look at the effect of various different lenses. For example, here is a simple convex lens. And what you see is that as we use a little bit of adjustment, the rays of light come in parallel, they are deflected, and they are focused at a point over there. So this is what would happen if we had an object at an infinite distance, so the rays of light were parallel from it, they are focused by that lens to a single focal point there. And that distance from the center of the lens to that point there is, in fact, the focal length of that lens. One of the equations that we'll use is the so-called lens maker's equation, and that shows that the focal length of a lens is uh, inversely proportional to the radius of curvature. So here is a shorter focal length lens with much more sharply curved sides. And you'll notice the focal length from there to there is much shorter. Those are convex lenses, which produce a converging ray of light. This is a concave lens, which produces a diverging system. So here again, we have parallel rays of light coming in here, and the outgoing rays of light are diverging. We can even use this to make very primitive optical instruments. So for example, here is a system where the convex lens will produce converging rays of light. The concave lens will cause these to diverge, and in fact, will probably give us a focus somewhere over here. Finally, th this is just to make the point that um, it doesn't really matter how the curvatures combine. This is a case where we have one surface of the lens which is flat and one which is semicircular. And again, the rays of light come in parallel there. They're focused there. And they give you a single, quite sharp focus at that point. Part of the reason for showing you this one is because if I flip this lens around, you'll notice that, in fact, the rays of light don't come to a focus at a single point. In fact, I have one focus there and one focus there. 
This is because this does not happen for simple lenses. This lens is, in fact, rather more complicated. It's not a thin lens in the technical sense of the word. And what we're seeing here is an effect that's actually known as spherical aberration. It's a fault with all lenses, but in fact, it becomes more extreme the larger the, uh, the shorter the focal length of the lens and the larger the curvature of the lens.